Hello, my name is Amara Quiro Sánchez, and I'm going to introduce the conference on behalf of the co-authors Mercedes Conde Valverde and Ignacio Martínez Mendizábal. We are part of the Life Science Department of Alcalá de Henares University in Madrid, Spain. We are going to present a comparative study of the inner air in the Omininase family. We hope you like it. There have been great advances in the study of cavities of the inner ear during the last 30 years, thanks to the development of imaging techniques that allows to build a highly reliable three-dimensional reconstruction of both cochlear and semicircular canals. This fact allows comparative studies both in the fossil record and in exane species with several purposes, such as performing morphometric studies, taxonomic diagnosis, and related this data to some peculiarities of the species, such as locomotion, agility, and auditory patterns. On the one hand, in the past decade, several authors carried out comparative biometric studies of the cochlea, like Coleman and Ross, Kick and Gosselin Hildary, and Coleman and Boyer with primates, Braga and Bodet with hominins, and Conde Valverde comparing the cochlea of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. On the other hand, researchers on semicircular canals have focused mainly on the study of hominin bony labyrinth. In 1988, Spur and Thonneville established a measurement procedure for semicircular canals that give us a valuable tool to define variables. Many authors used the same procedure, such as Quam in 2016 with fossil of la cima de los huesos in Atapuerca, Spain, and Conde Valverde in 2018 with the Pleistocene fossil Aroeira 3 in Portugal. Our hypothesis is to know if by applying the procedure designed made by Spur and Thonneville, we can determine a state polarity in the Mininaso family. In this way, we aim to carry out a comparative study in omininasal family and to set up a sequence of evolutionary chains in their semicircular canals. For the comparative study, we have a sample of 23 crania of gorilla gorilla, 11 pantoglodites, and 26 specimens of Homo sapiens. Thus, to perform the phylogenetic analysis, we have to define the character present in the semicircular canals of our sample using biometric techniques. To determine the state polarity, based on the commonly accepted systematic for primates, we decide to use the outgroup criterion formed by spaces where the primitive set of threads are present. And after all this process, we can propose a polarity of a state and a sequence of evolutionary chains. This is a cladogram of primates, and as we can see, to determine the outgroups, we choose groups that belong to the same clade, and therefore they are closely related. On the one hand, the species belonging to Thercopithecoidea superfamily, and on the other hand, individuals of the hominoid superfamily that not belong to the hominin subfamily. We get the data provided by Spur and Thonneville Research in 1988 for the outgroups. Therefore, for the hominoid superfamily, we have seven specimens of Pongo pygmaeus and two specimens of Ilovitis syndactylus. And for the Thercopithecoidea superfamily, three individuals of Macaca fascicularis and one individual of Mandrillus sphin. As that paper only offers data from one individual of these species, we decided to add three more individuals to our study. For this purpose, we performed a CT scan of the right temporal bone of the three Mandrillus sphin specimen to obtain the 3D model or the semicircular canals. The process of reconstruction of 3D model from radiological image is very laborious, so we have summarized it in three fundamental steps. First, we need to set up the limit between bone and air cavities to define the structure under study. Second, we have to segment image by image. Three, we build the 3D model. On CT image, we delimite petrous bone areas in white and cavities areas which are colored air in black, using the procedure established by Coleman and Colbert, based on a grayscale according to a previous threshold. So, working with MIMIC software, we create a working mass to fill the cavities with color, image by image. Finally, the sum of all those images generates a 3D model on which we can take measurements directly. We took absolute measurement by applying a spur and procedure. 
Then, we calculate the size and shape in discs that we will later use for our study. That is, the relative size of the anterior, the lateral and the posterior semicircular canals, the shaping discs of the anterior, lateral and the posterior semicircular canals, and the sagittal index of the labyrinth. These are the virtual model on which we took measurement, the inner air of an immature specimen, adult female, and adult male specimen. To analyze the data obtained, we first performed a univariant analysis. Due to the great station of the result obtained, we will only expose those that are the most representative of each index study. In the graphs, the means of each species, the standard deviation and the range of each species are represented. The specimen of Mandrillus sphinx are represented by a red rhombus for the immature individual, a red square for the adult female, and a red triangle for the adult male. As we can see, in the graph of the relative size of the anterior semicircular canal, the T-student test shows that there are significant differences between the three samples, which concurs with the separation between the species in the graph. Regarding the shape index of the lateral canal, we observe wide areas of overlap in the graph of average. We saw that there are no significant differences between the three samples study. Finally, in the graph of the sagittal index of the labyrinth, we observe that there are significant differences between gorillas and humans, chimpanzee and humans, but not between gorillas and humans. In the principal components analysis, the first factor explains practically how for the variance. We observe in this factor a clear separation between Homo sapiens cluster in green with negative values and both African ape cluster with positive values, gorillas cluster in blue and chimpanzees cluster in pink. Due to the effect of the relative size of the anterior and posterior canal, with high values on the lateral canal with low values to the more rounded shape of the anterior canal and to RSLI with higher values in Homo sapiens. Larger lateral canals predominate in gorillas and chimpanzees. Concerning to the outside group, two individuals of Mandrillus sphinx are included in a key probability ellipse of gorillas, and one of them is located in the area of intersection between humans and chimpanzees. This is the proposed table of state present based on our sample and on measurement of Mandrillus sphinx as an outside group. We emphasize that the Homo sapiens shows a proportionally large anterior and posterior canal, a proportionally small lateral canal, a rounded shaped canals, and SLI in a high position. To check whether of result are comparable with the data of Spur and Thonneville, we add the gorilla, chimpanzee, and humans average into our comparative study. Once we have verified that we use similar procedure, we can introduce their values and, as an outside group, and then propose the state polarity sequence. In our result graph, we have included the values of gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans from Spur and Thonneville and the data of the outgroups both of the superfamily hominidae and the superfamily Thercopithecoidea. These are the average of Spur and Thorneville that which are included within the range of variation or of sample. As we see before, in the outgroup shows that the primitive character was made in relative size of the anterior canal. According to the result of our study, we propose two derived states. A small relative site in gorillas and a large relative site in humans. As we can see in the graph, there are no significant difference between the specimen under the study, and they all coincide in the area of influence of the external groups. Then, about the relative size of the lateral canal, there are no changes concerning the primitive state. Concerning the sagittal index, of the labyrinth, we can see the areas of overlap between gorillas and chimpanzees, where the outgroups are positioned, but there is a clear difference between both groups with humans. 
This means that the primitive state of SLI in a low position is present in all species except in Homo sapiens that show a derived state in higher position. Finally, this is the table of state of polarity proposed. In black, the primitive features, and blue, derived characters. The semicircular canals of the species Ilobates syndactylus shows the most ancestral condition within the hominoid superfamily, since it doesn't present any derived state in the features studied. The species Gorilla Gorilla has to derive state within the hominoid superfamily, a small relative size of the anterior semicircular canal and a large relative size of the lateral semicircular canal. The species Homo sapiens show four derived states with the hominoid superfamily, large relative size of the anterior semicircular canal, a small relative size of the lateral semicircular canal, and large relative size of the posterior semicircular canal, and a high value of the sagittal index of the labyrinth. The Homo sapien species present a derived state within hominidae subfamily, that is reminiscent of the ancestral condition circular shape of the anterior semicircular canal. Hominidae family, step Homo sapiens, has an oval anterior semicircular canal, which constitute a derived state from Catarrhine infraorder. And that's all. Thank you so much for your attention and to be on talk for the opportunity to participate. Bye.